This group of paintings is called Jungle Drums, and it was actually inspired by this sheet of vintage decals I found when I was I'm probably a teenager or in my early 20s, and it was these pinup girls with wild animals. And I still have them, actually. And it sort of evoked this idea that you're combining sensuality with primitive exotica. And you're, you're casting civilization away, and you're embracing sort of your savage inner self, which was a popular theme back in the 50s and 60s. Maybe not so much now, because things are so politically correct. That's kind of the feeling I wanted to evoke with these paintings. So there's a lot of women in zebra-striped outfits and, and leopard-spotted outfits, but I'm kind of approaching it from the opposite angle. So the women in the paintings are actually in control in all of these situations. It's the men who are out of control. I found this set of decals in a thrift store in the 1980s when I was probably 19 or 20, and I fell in love with it, and I've carried it around with me ever since. I did one painting based on that in about 1997, but I wasn't very good at painting leopard spots back then. I thought I would return to this and do an entire show of paintings that were inspired by these pinup girls and all their politically incorrect glory. The largest painting in the show is called Primal Cuts, and it's sort of a, a panoramic party scene, sort of a sophisticated jungle setting, I guess. The women are dressed as panthers, and the men are all wearing brown jackets with little sort of uh, delineated dotted marks on them. And almost like a, a gag panel, it's not until you get to the far right of the painting that you see that it's actually one of those diagrams that tells you how to butcher a piece of meat and how to get the cuts. So to the far right of the painting, the, the man's jacket says chuck, rib, loin, hawk, shank. That's kind of reiterating this point that the women are in charge and the men are intended victims. When I saw Corey Helford Gallery's new space, which is about the size of an airplane hangar, I realized I had to work larger and I also had to come up with some ideas to fill the space, to sort of make an installation that encompassed what I was trying to say with jungle drums. So what you see here is sort of the result of that thought process. This painting called Bunny and the Beasts is my idealized version of what the pinup photography studio of the 1950s might have been like. Again, if you look at it, you see the women are in control. And the photographer there, I imagine it's Bunny Yeager, who was probably the most well-known pinup photographer back in the 1950s. These pinup photographs are, are really sexist and, and politically incorrect. They were sort of empowering to both the models and the photographers if they were females. And I've noticed in the last 10 years there's been a big resurgence of pinup photography. A lot of female pinup photographers as well. And you see these kind of strong tattooed women now with Betty Page haircuts taking pinup photography really seriously. And sort of calling it their own. So again, it's sort of an inversion of what you think it might be like, you know, a girly magazine or, or a pinup photograph. It's something that has been taken back and become empowering. I did a painting called Souvenirs. It's sort of the jungle explorer returned back to the city. He's brought back a bunch of souvenirs for his apartment. I posted this painting on Instagram and somebody unfollowed me and commented that the painting was sexist, racist, and depicted colonialism. So that's why they were unfollowing me. <laughs> and I just laughed. 
Obviously, they didn't get where I was going with this painting. I'm trying to turn this stuff upside down. I don't believe in colonialism, I don't believe in racism, I don't believe in sexism. While all of those things are touched upon in this painting, I think they're touched upon in the exact opposite direction from me condoning them. A lot of my work, it takes these pop culture elements and it celebrates them, but it also satirizes them at the same time. Something like the idea of going into the jungle and despoiling it and bringing back animal heads and horns and, and skins and bringing back a pretty jungle girl. I'm trying to talk about that in today's language, which is sort of the language of irony, satire, but I'm also celebrating it. You know, I have to say, the idea of being able to actually do that is intriguing and I know it's completely wrong. These totems were inspired by the height of this room. I knew I wanted to do something really vertical, which took uh, advantage of how high we can go. And these are sort of the most primitive sculptural forms you could think of, but created in the most space age, sort of futuristic materials. Nothing man-made about it, nothing natural. It's all synthetic. Whereas the original carver or something like that might have used stone tools and natural pig pigments, these are all plastics and polymers. I had six of these made. These are called spirit masks. And again, completely synthetic. Even this hair is extruded polymer. Nothing natural about it. And each one of these has a little meaning to me, but I'm not gonna tell you what it is. You gotta figure it out for yourself.